Uh, welcome to our short video. We just wanted to come on to introduce ourselves and our new staff members so everyone can get to know us all a little bit better. So we're going to start by just saying, you know, where we're from, what we what our role is at HDO and, and our names. And I'll go first and I'll pass on to Matt, then Jenna and then Rebecca. So I'm Hayley. I'm the chair of the board at HDO and I live in the UK. Uh, in the northwest, so that's near Liverpool um, and Manchester, and I'll hand over to Matt to go next. Hello, I'm Matt. I'm the founder of HGO, also the project coordinator of HGO, and also from England, like Haley. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Do you want to go next, Jenna? You're just on mute. Sorry about that. My name is Jenna and I am from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and I am the mentorship project coordinator with HDO. Awesome. Thank you, Jenna. Rebecca. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I live in Sheffield in the north of the UK um, and I'm study coordinator uh, for the joint HD study at HDO. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys so much, you know, for, for sharing that with us. And now we're going to talk a little bit about um, our connections to HD. Um, so I'll go first again. So I um, worked in um, in my you know main job in Huntington's disease for, for the past uh, three years. And then I kind of got involved in advocacy groups and met amazing people. And then I met Matt at a conference in 2019 and didn't put me off. I wanted to join and be a part of HDO. And I spoke to BJ and kind of that's how I got involved um, with HDO. So I don't have any personal connection to HD in my family, but having um, met, you know, Astri from the European organization, Kath from the UK, and also, you know, Louise and other team members from, from the US, um, it's just a really special community. I'm so thrilled to, you know, be be a part of it and uh, helping out. And I'll hand over to Matt next, which many of you may know. But since we're going around and introducing everyone, we're going to get Matt to share share his connection to HD again. I love how Haley said I met lots of amazing people and Matt. And <laughs> so Matt. harsh. Amazing okay. people and Matt. I know. I appreciate it. Thank you, Haley. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm founder of HTO and uh, yeah, I come from a HT family. Uh, my father had Huntington's and I tested positive when I was about 19 years old. I'm now 32, uh, not symptomatic um, and doing well. Is that enough, Haley? No, that's perfect. Thank you, Matt, for um, sharing that with us. Um, and I know at our recent Congress as well, you shared obviously your story and some beautiful pictures of um you know your dad but also your wife and your your little boy as well well you didn't tell me to mention them otherwise i would have mentioned them um jenna do you want to go next sure um so like matt huntington's disease um runs in my family um my mom's um uh, generation so my my mom and my aunt and my aunts and uncles um, are the first generation in my family to have officially been um, diagnosed with Huntington's disease. So about um, 10 years ago, we um, it became known that, that Huntington's disease was, was in our family and um, here we are today. So that's my connection to um, Huntington's disease. No, that's great. Thank you so much, Jenna. And um, Rebecca, if you want to give a background of how you got involved in the HD space. Yeah, so um, similar to Haley, so I don't have a personal connection to HD um, from my family, but it is something that um, I've been involved with in my work life. So I started um, working in HD in 2017, where I started um, in clinical research in the NHS. Um, here in England. So I worked as study coordinator for the Enroll HD um, observational study. And then later on, um, I worked on Generation HD1, the Rush drug trial, uh, which obviously stopped earlier this year. So I was coordinating those studies locally um, in Sheffield, where I live. Um, and yes, 
as Hayley said, as soon as I started working with HD families and um, becoming aware of the HD research community, it's just such an inspiring um, group of people, really. So I was, um, I've really enjoyed my time working in HD and it's something I want to continue in the future. No, that's awesome. Thank you, Rebecca. And just to make a comment for the rest of the board as well, obviously they're not they're not here, it's just me on this call, but our board's kind of split like that as well. So we have several family members um, and caregivers, um, you know, gene positive and, and gene negative and, and at-risk people. Um, and we also have some professionals who've worked in HD for, gosh, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. Um, so it's a, a real big mix of, of people we have um, who make up the whole the whole uh, family of HD year. So the next thing we'll talk about is kind of like why why HD year, what excites everyone about HD year and why they wanted to join HD year. So again, for me, it was the the young people aspect of it. So before you know, I kind of met. Um, people in the Huntington's community I'd done we have in the UK like brownies guides and scouts um, I don't know what the same is for the US but kind of you know scouts and cubs and things like that so I'd always work with young people and I think you know it's hard enough to to grow up as a teenager you know we've we've all been through that and it's a it's a big challenge so I think when you add something like HD into the mix and the complexities there you know if you're looking after a parent and you yourself are worried about how it might affect you it's just an area I really wanted to, to get involved with really and I guess I'm a bit of a um yeah young person at heart still so <laughs> I wanted to to get involved and, and support where I could um so I'll hand over to Matt who obviously founded HDO but maybe you know kind of why why you created HDO yeah um yeah, it was really an unmet need um, in terms of young people getting the support and the services they need. Um, and that I experienced it firsthand in my own family. Um, my father was progressing and yeah, as, as Hayley said, you know, I was going through it in my teen years and that was, it was really challenging. Um, and I came through it in the end, but it was really challenging. And I had very little support as a young person at that point. Um, and then when I look back at my life and realized actually the impact that HT had had on my life uh, growing up uh, was so severe and that there was no real help for me at all that really made me want to do something about it um, so that other young people and families around the world weren't, weren't going the same way as I did. Um, and then, you know, I realized very quickly speaking to some young people that it wasn't just an issue in this country, it was an issue globally. Um, even more so in, in many other countries. So um, that was the reason why when I set up HGO as, as a global organization to really combat that. No, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matt, for sharing that. I know a lot of people who are involved with HGO have kind of heard that before, but I think it's really important and that's really kind of why we're all here anyway. Um, so I'll hand over to, to Jenna now just to tell us a bit about kind of like why you wanted to apply for the role at HDO and uh, maybe touch on, you know, your experience from Canada and stuff as well. That would be great. Yeah, so um, I, I'm excited to be a part of HDO for, um, for many reasons. And one of the, the most important reasons to me is that I see it as an opportunity to give back. I, um, I, I got involved in the HD community um, through the Huntington Society of Canada. Um, about 10 years ago, and it was really crucial for um, my ability to cope um, with managing Huntington's disease in my family, and um, the Huntington Society um, was really important to me, and still is, um, in particular, their mentorship program. And um, so getting involved with HDO is an opportunity for me to give back to um, the Huntington's community. I'm particularly interested in um, the youth aspect of it because um, I see um, young people today as really being the future of Huntington's disease. I see young people as our future advocates. They are future caregivers. They are future trial participants. They're future scientists and researchers and they're future leaders in this community. And that is why I'm excited to be a part of HDO. 
No, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Jenna, for, for that great um, summary of why you wanted to join us. Um, and Rebecca, if you want to go next. Yeah, so um, I was excited to work for HDO um, to apply for this opportunity because um, it was mainly, again, it was the youth aspect that mostly drew me towards it. Um, so as I said previously, um, I was very keen to carry on working in Huntington's disease research. But um, what I didn't mention was as well as those Huntington studies I've worked on previously, the other side of my job, like it was split half and half, was working in rare paediatric disease. Um, so I had lots of experience working with um, children and their families um, who were affected by rare diseases. So uh, when um, this opportunity came up, I thought it was the perfect thing for me to go for. So I was very excited to have the opportunity to help young people with Huntington's disease and then yeah just to be able to work um for such a like inspiring charity that as Matt said it, it really um meets the unmet need of young people in this community and it's improving things over time for them um and yeah really meeting their needs so I was excited by that aspect as well to be part of it. No thank you Rebecca and we're very lucky to uh, to have you guys as well. Um, one thing we didn't mention, which I'll just do a quick summary of because I forgot to ask was um, Matt works um, with us uh, four days a week. Um, Jenna does four hours a week-ish, <laughs> um, depending on, you know, what's needed on a week by week basis. And Jenna, I hope you don't mind saying, but in your main kind of other job, you work as a teacher, which is which is awesome. Um, and Rebecca works for us, um, it, you know, it works out with three days a week, doesn't it? That's great. Um, so the kind of last question we had that we wanted to share with you all was the different projects we're working on. So each of us is kind of like heading up and leading some of the like awesome, exciting projects that we're working on. Well, we think so. And so I'll go first. So um, I'm working on a volunteer project called HDO Ambassadors. And I'd be remiss not to mention the wonderful Ashley who is working on that with me, who's from the HD Association in Northern Ireland. And it's a volunteer project where people can get involved, be part of a community, um, can volunteer to raise awareness and um, hopefully, you know, lead to fundraising. So we meet once a month for an hour. And if you want to get involved, you know, you can, you drop me a line and you're more than welcome to be involved. Um, so throughout the past month, we've been doing, you know, what's your story and sharing stories. And it's been so great to get young people engaged from Bahrain, from Egypt, from South America, um, as well as, you know, North America, Europe. Um, so really to have that broad, um, and Australasia as well, we have someone who we can't, you know, it's difficult because they have to join calls at, um, you know, midnight, but we're trying to be as inclusive, for, as inclusive as possible for everyone. So that's the HDO Ambassadors Project that I've been working on. And I'll hand over to Matt, who will tell us about all the awesome education projects he's been working on. Thank you, Hayley. Yeah, I'm not really doing anything at the moment. I'm just chilling. <laughs> no, he's not. We're working him very hard. <laughs> um, no, I'm doing... Um, so the, the regular ones that I'm doing every month, uh, we're doing... Well, after Congress as well, we should say, you know, Congress. After Congress. Congress is over now. massive for yeah. Matt, so post-Congress. <laughs> yeah, we did virtual Congress, which was uh, a fantastic success. And, and thank you, everybody who attended that and, and uh, really enjoyed it, it seems. So, you know, uh, we're already starting to look at doing another one next year as well. They're already working on that a little bit. Um, so, but uh, my regular things that I work on, so we've got uh, monthly staying connected calls that we have with just like uh, just virtual support sessions for people on, on particular topics. So we got one uh, in, in the tomorrow, uh, we've got another one. Um, my match chats series, which is just interviewing uh, young people and anyone in the HD community really about, again, just talking about uh, interesting topics that might be of interest to, to others to watch. Um, so we do those monthly as well. Um, and at the moment, we're working quite a lot on a project uh, to bring, uh, to kind of bring uh, HD Buzz articles who do a fantastic organization that kind of explain HD research, how to use those and, and convert that into something, uh, into a nice simple video format that we can put on social media on a regular basis. And that's that's been quite a big project we've been working on for probably over six months or so. Um, and we've got a video coming out very soon on that one, actually, the first one's ready to go. So 
Um, that's really quite an exciting project that's going to be happening right soon. We're also doing um, a couple of the other video projects this year. Um, one that I'm working on a lot at the moment is um, a whiteboard animation video where we're going to be explaining how drugs are developed and also the clinical trial pathway that is followed. So just to give some explanations there and some insight. Um, so that's what we're already working on at the moment. And also we're looking at uh, exploring kind of how, well, exploring the feelings of young people who are participating in research. Uh, so following some young people through their research progress, uh, which we're working with UCL on at the moment. Um, so yeah, we've got a few things in the pipeline that we're working on and more to come after that as well. Is that enough? Yeah, Did I forget something? I no, that was that was that was that covered everything. So that was awesome. Thank you so much, Matt. And if anyone here any of that had any more questions or wanted to reach out to us um, or had any other ideas of stuff you want to see or another topic for a video, just let us know. Uh, get in touch with Matt, who's Matt at hdo.org, or just comment comment on this video. Um, and we'll hand over to Jenna, who's going to tell us about the project she's been working on. Yeah, so um, HDO has been working in partnership with HDSA um, to um, and the Huntington Society of Canada to um, deliver a mentorship program to build and deliver a mentorship program for youth um, in the US. Um, and eventually uh, we'll go wider with that and more global. So right now, the goal is to um, create a mentorship program that um, is very similar to the mentorship program that is currently being operated, uh, that is currently being run in um, Canada with the Huntington Society of Canada. The idea is to provide young people with an opportunity to connect with a trained peer mentor who will be able to provide them with valuable support at critical points in their life. And the goal is to have you paired with a mentor who comes from a family affected by Huntington's disease, um, who uh, may be uh, have a similar experience to you um, or have gone through something um, that you are wondering about or that you have questions about. Um, we believe that sharing this common experience will allow you to better uh, manage and cope um, with uh, whatever it is that you are going through. Um, so our mentors will be committed to providing you um, with any type of support you might need along your journey. That's that's awesome. Thank you, Jenna. Um, so it's really focusing on that peer-to-peer -peer support, isn't it, um, in the US? And we're going to be building that network going forward. So there'll be more like information on that to come later later in the year. But that's kind of all being, you know, all being, all being worked on at the moment. And then, Jenna, I wonder if you could, if you don't mind sharing just briefly, that Jenna took part in the Huntington Society of Canada Mentorship Programme as, as a mentor. And I think you found that really, really enjoyable, didn't you? Yeah, so I've been a part of the mentorship program in Canada now for huh, maybe seven years, um, quite a few years. Um, I know that my my mentee was not in high school yet when we partnered together, and she's graduating this year. Um, <laughs> and it's been a really wonderful experience. Um, for uh, me to be to have um, someone that I can connect with, um, and 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 for her likewise, knowing that she can connect with me um, whenever she needs someone, and at various points throughout um, both of our our lives, um, we've had points where we're much more connected than others, but. Um, but the point is that we know that we are there for each other and um, we're always available to chat and support each other whenever we can. It's been a very um, positive and rewarding experience. No, that's awesome. Thank you, Jenna. And then Rebecca, if you could tell us a bit about the um, JHD registry and tell us the name and, you know, about it and things like that. Yeah. So the project that I'm working on um, it's called Join HD, um, so that is a registry project for families affected by juvenile Huntington's disease. 
Um, so it's a really important project because uh, juvenile Huntington's disease is incredibly rare. So Huntington's disease as a whole is classed as a rare disease and then juvenile cases. Um, so that's where people are diagnosed before the age of 21. So those cases only account for around 5% of the total. So it's a really rare condition. And um, because of that, um, it's hindered progress into research into the condition and also the care that these families receive because it's just really not a lot is known about it at the moment. So um, the point of Join HD, our registry study, is we're really um, putting a big effort into trying to locate families affected by JHD all around the world. Um, so that's the main initial aim of the study. Um, and I'm involved in the, the startup of it, um, getting it all going, getting people recruited. And then later down the line, um, we will be expanding and uh, looking at different research questions with this community. But yeah, um, at the beginning, it's we want to try and get as many people as possible so that um, in the future, the aim is to improve JHD care um, and research. And there's so many different things as part of that, isn't it? It's so we can understand as HDO how to improve our care and work with all other organisations to identify people who need the support um, and to be able to work with them to support them better. Um, and then, you know, with the data from that, what that will obviously, you know, be anonymised before it's shared, you know, and we can provide you with more details if you want any more information on that. But then to be able to share that, you know, with to really advocate for, you know, companies who, pharma companies who want to develop drugs, you know, we're looking at HD, maybe early symptomatic now, but, you know, we really want to advocate for treatment and also just care options for uh, JHD uh, patients as well. So this is kind of like the start and it might not look very clear of how we're going to get there, but having a disease registry um you know run by us is is really you know the first key step and stone to be able to start to um better support and advocate for the jhd population that's awesome um so i just want to say thank you so much to our staff members for joining us today i know we span a couple of time zones so thank you all for joining i also want to thank um our donors as well who we couldn't well none of us would be here <laughs> but thank you uh for everyone our donors and people supporting the project so for the few of the projects that were mentioned i just want to call out um unicure um sage genentech neurocrine Tava, ptc and roche and hopefully many more to come uh because the particular projects we just mentioned there um that's that's who has provided uh funding or sponsorship for us to be able to um, carry out that work as well. Um, I don't know, did anyone else have anything else they wanted to add at all? No? Um, but with that, we'll say um, thank you and we will stop the recording now if Matt can stop the recording. <laughs>